All right, let's get this on the road. Welcome everyone. Welcome back for those who were there yesterday or both days, yesterday and the day before. And hello to everyone joining new today. Uh, today on this stream, I'm going to talk about some object-oriented programming with Python. And again, I'm going to do this in a very practical approach just by building out a little mm -hmm. Pokemon type game. So it's don't expect too much functionality from it, but you're going to be able to let two like different instances of Pokemon battle against each other and feed them. So that's what we're going to build out in this um, in this stream. And just as a quick introduction, that's me. I'm Martin. I do mentorship and content creation at Coding Nomads, and I am the creator of the Python the Django course that we have on our platform. And I got a bunch of years of teaching Python under my belt by now. I also want to share with you again a couple of links that are relevant. I forgot so far to give you this link, which is the relevant. This is a nice and important one, which is actually the GitHub repository for this three-day Python training, where you can find the code that I'm writing um, and also uh, some explanations about the different topics and what are the concepts that, that I'm covering in these different uh, parts of, the, of, of this three-day mini course. So check that out. There's also a link to our Twitch and YouTube, which I'm gonna yet again pop in here into the chat so that uh, you can check it out if you want. And we're also uh, thinking about doing just some weekly hangout sessions on our Twitch channel. So if you're interested in that, maybe write in the chat if you would want something like that. And then we could just hang out for an hour every week and build, work a little on projects or discuss some programming related topics so if you're interested in that, let us know. And here's also the link to our learning platform where you can get access to a bunch of free materials and start learning if you're interested. All right, so much for links in here. Now I'm gonna go back to the project at hand. And today while building out this uh, little program, the little game, we're gonna talk uh, about, a, we're gonna cover a, a couple of concepts again in a similar way that how this happened in the, in the last two days. So I'm just gonna mostly focus on writing the project. And once we hit something, you know, a new concept or something that is important to understand in order to move on or to build out a specific thing, then I'm gonna talk a little bit about what this is. And uh, object-oriented programming is generally like quite, used quite widely in the programming world. And uh, I think that writing a game is a really nice way of getting an idea of what object-oriented programming is about. And so we might not even have to cover too much uh, theoretical stuff, but just you'll see how it makes sense and why it makes sense by the project that we're going to build. Okay, so there's a couple of these topics that are gonna be co covered. These things might or might not mean something for you for now, but uh, you'll see me address them when the time is there, so to say. Okay, so that's back to VS Code. It's the same project that I've been using during the past two days as well. And I'm going to start off by creating a new file in here. And I'm going to call it poke.py because we're going to build a little Pokemon game. Okay, so I will make this also a bit bigger so everyone can read this. Maybe that's a little too big. I'm going to stick with this size. Uh, if anyone can, if it's too small, let me know. I can still increase it. I'll put it up one notch. OK, um, so again, I'm going to start off with writing a little bit of pseudocode just to get the idea of what this game is going to be about. Um, and oh, one thing I forgot to mention pops in my head right now is uh, for the recordings. We, we're also recording these sessions and we're going to send them out. Should be They should be all up and you're going to get an email by tomorrow, I believe, should, should work out. So if you're interested in rewatching these, then you're going to get a chance to do it as well. Okay, time for this game. I'm going to start off with a little pseudocode and this is going to be um, just the topics of what do I want to cover in this in this program. Um, I want to be able to create gonna get create a Pokemon. Then I want to be able to take a look at it. Um, what else? I want to be able to feed them to increase the health. Right? And what else? Of course, I want to be able to make them battle. 
and decide for a winner. So we're going to need some sort of uh, game logic in here as well then. But uh, if you think about this, um, uh, if you're familiar with the Pokemon games, if you played them at all, you, it's essentially a glorified rock, paper, scissors. So there's some sort of d different types that battle against each other and one type wins over the other. It's, a, it's more complex than that, obviously, in the real game. But that's pretty much what uh, I'm going to implement here. So it's just going to depend on the, on the types, which types battle against each other. Um, but that's a very rough outline of the topics that I kind of like want to implement in this little game. OK, so let's start with the first one. If there's any questions or anything that you want to explore more, just like the last days, just feel free to put it in the, in the chat. I have the chat up so I can see when you write something. And I'm happy to discuss anything. I like live sessions for the fact that they're interactive. So let's make them interactive, right? It's more interesting. OK, so if you have a little bit of experience with Python, like you might have uh, you know, even if you've just been on the streams before, we, you already explored a little, like we did stuff like creating a number or creating a, a string and assigning it to a variable, right? All of these things in Python, because Python is built in an object-oriented way, are actually objects. So when I, when I do this, when I make 42, when I write it down like this, I create a, an integer object. That's what these ones are called in Python. And if I do this, if I create a greeting and assign it to a string, then I create a string object. So all of these things are, are actually objects. So you've already worked with objects, but it's not really necessary that you understand a ton about it. But um, you, now we're going to peel a little under the hood by making our own object. So instead of just using some that Python already comes with, we're actually going to create a new one. And in Python, you can do this with the keyword called class. And then this is the one time when you use uh, capitalization in Python. Usually, you also always want to write everything in lowercase and snake case. That looks like this, snake case. So instead of spaces, you, you put these underscores and everything in underscore. But if you define a class, then it is capitalized. And that's also why you shouldn't capitalize other variables, because then it's clear already when, when you go and, and read something like that, that you know that this is actually an object. OK, and you might remember, if you were on the streams before, you might remember that uh, we worked with something like that, which was the pathlib. So we did we said from pathlib, which is a module in the standard library, we imported, uh, can't tap it, whoops, there you go, path. So you see that this is uppercase. So what this indicates for you when you see something like that in Python is that you know, and if I hover, I also get more information in VS Code that this is an object. So this is a class that is defined somewhere in the pathlib module. And the path capitalized thing is an object. So we're making something similar now by saying class Pokemon. That's what, what we're going to make. And you could just think of it of an instance of a Pokemon. So uh, Bulbasaur, for example, right? And uh, for now, I'm not going to do anything in here. I'm just going to say pass, which is a Python keyword that says, I am valid Python code, so don't, don't throw me any errors. I know this class should have some content in there. I'm going to implement it later. Just relax, interpreter. Um, it's all good, OK? So I can, I can just say, don't do anything for now. This is, this is just going to create the class and nothing else. And uh, let's hop back over into the uh, Python REPL in here. And I want to show you something new here as well from in the first stream, you, we looked just at the plain Python REPL by typing Python and entering it like that. But, and it's good for exploration, but you see it's like, it's a little, I don't know, it's a little, what's the right word? It's just black and white and you don't have auto completion or anything like that. So it's a, a little dire to work with. Um, and then later, yesterday, we looked into using breakpoint for debugging. So you hop into this PDP debugger, um, which is also pretty much plain text just like that. Um, but they're all like valid ways of interacting on a, uh, if you ask a question, you get feedback right away from Python. So I want to show you a third one, which is essentially just um, an, a REPL like this one, but it adds a bit of color and makes it a bit easier with auto-completion auto functionalities. And this one is called ppython. And I already have it installed. If you don't have it, you can install it using pip install, ppython. And then you call you enter this shell in the same way as you would up there. So like I, I type Python to enter the Python shell. And if I say bpython, then I enter this bpython shell. Again, it's very similar, 
but you see already I get a bit of color here. And uh, when I type, you will see that it has a couple of advantages. So it's more fun to work with. Okay, so I wanna play around with this Pokemon class that I defined in my script. How can I get access to it in here in the repo? Well, since the repo is starting in the same folder, in this Python days folder is where I'm currently at and that's where I started the repo. And this file that contains my Pokemon class is just lying there. I can go ahead and import it in the same way as you did any sorts of imports so far in Python. So you can import your, your code in, in, the same in the same way as long as you're in the same folder. Otherwise, there's, you can also do it otherwise, but there's a little more fiddling you need to do. But if you're inside of the same folder, it's very easy. You can just say import and you see I already get some auto completion from the ppython repo that I can then just with pressing the right error, I don't even need to type it out everything. Okay, so now this is not working uh, because it's not called Pokemon, but it's called Poke. So that must have been something that I typed before. That's why it showed me this auto completion. Okay, so I, I need to type exactly the name that this file has. And also, one thing that I try to always highlight when you're working with programming is that if you get an error, if you get a trace back, don't get scared of this, right? This is not a problem at all. It's just Python telling you um, we have some sort of miscommunication and something that you tried to do doesn't really make sense to me. And that's what I know. So it gives you this, this very helpful feedback usually, which in this case is, oh, I couldn't find this module by just naming it module, not found error, very descriptive. And then gives you even more descriptive information. This specific one that I typed called Pokemon doesn't exist. It couldn't, it couldn't find it. And the reason is, like I just said before, because it's named differently. It's called Poke. You don't need to put this PY at the end if you import a module. It, it needs to be a Python file anyways to be recognized. So like this, I can say import Poke. And you see no problem here. Let me make that bigger. No, that doesn't work. I, I don't actually know how to clear the repl so that it would be further up so um yeah <laughs> it's just gonna be here at the bottom i hope you can still see it okay so uh, i imported this this was fine right i got no error here this second error is just because i tapped something that doesn't exist in there and now i can create um i can create an instance of this pokemon class that i defined i can say uh, bulbasaur equals uh -huh. And um, here, something interesting also that you already discovered that it, with the pathlib module, I think maybe we tried importing at the beginning, just saying import pathlib. And then I later changed it to from pathlib import path. Okay. And uh, this touches on the concept of namespaces. So I can't directly call Pokemon the class in here doesn't exist, I don't get any autocomplete because it's hidden in the name, namespace of the file that they imported. So it's it's hidden inside of this Poke file and then inside of there is this Pokemon class. So I can say Poke.Pokemon and then I get the autocompletion. So this concept of namespaces um, is also a really, really useful one in programming because uh, it allows you to um, like avoid running into problems with same named type of things because I could have something, I could declare a different class with the same name, also called Pokemon inside of my REPL in here now, and they wouldn't override each other. They wouldn't clash with, with each other because this specific one that's defined in that file is uh, hidden inside of that namespace. And that's already, a, that's already um, maybe gives you a bit of a feel for an object oriented nature because uh, you, you will see that this works very similar. So. In a way, with objects, it's going to work very similar. So in a way, you can think of these files as big objects that then have smaller objects in there as well, because the access to them are similar, as you will see. OK, so let me create this uh, instance. And I can do this by calling the class. So you've seen me call methods before. And we will look some more about methods in here now also, because they're a concept uh, their fu functions on top of a specific object. Um, but uh, if you do this on the class name, then it's going to create an instance of it. So now I have this thing here, Bulbasaur. And you can see that it is a Pokemon object from the Pokey module that I imported. 
at a specific memory location. This is the output that I get, currently get. Okay, so that's all. Like there's no other information in here right now. Um, I don't know anything about its type. I don't know anything about its name, et cetera, et cetera, because there's nothing I put in this class at this point, but I can already create an empty object. It's kind of cool. And then I can do things like, I can say Hobosaur.name equals Hobosaur or Bulby maybe, let's call them like that. And now you see with the same syntax, this dot is like kind of like a, a little portal. You can think of it like a little portal that you can step into the class or the, the object that you're working with and do something in there, in that space. What I did is I stepped into this, um, into this instance space of that specific object and added an attribute to it. So similar as if I would define in here, I would say name equals hello. This name uh, variable here would be, and you could think of it as an attribute to this pokey um, module, essentially, right? Like it's a, it's a module level variable in here. And the one that I created down here is an instance uh, attribute. So it's a variable that lives only inside of this specific instance of, of a Pokemon because every Pokemon is gonna have its own name, right? So every instance of a Pokemon that I make, it's gonna have a different name associated to it. So I want that name, I want all of them to have a dot name attribute, but I want it to be different for each instance that I make. Okay, so um, fine, so this has a name. Um, but what happens if I exit this and then maybe I want to go back in, look at this again from import pokey. And then do I still have access to this? What if I say, if I give, if I give it the same name, right? I say, professor is pokey dot pokey. And here you see the auto completion makes it a bit easier. Oh, blah, gotta spell it right name okay so this doesn't exist anymore uh oh i have a question will the data inside the in instance persist between sessions uh -huh, yeah there you go this is what i'm just trying <laughs> what i'm just trying out uh it it will not right so this is just a REPL session so any data that i make in here gets lost and also because um this name attribute isn't at all defined in the class that i wrote like i, I didn't do anything in this class it's just an empty class um there's no way uh, like that the Python would even would even know about the attribute at all. So it's telling me if I try to access this attribute uh, in this new session where I didn't define it, it's telling me this doesn't even exist. There's no such attribute on that class, which is right, right? If you look back at the class that I made in here, there's nothing such in there. But I guess we want all of our Pokemon to have a name, right? So in order to do this, I can go back over to the class and instead of not doing anything in here, I can do something that should happen to should happen every time that I make a new instance of this class. So every time I want to um, define a new Pokemon, I want it to have a name. So I can say, and uh, uh, just look at it for now. These methods I'm going to talk about them more are called uh, Dunder methods, and they're special methods in Python. They are aren't actually that special. They're just normal methods, but by having these two underscores in here, you're kind of indicating that these are methods that only the person who writes the class should do anything with. So anyone who's using the class later on by importing your module and doing something with it or playing your game, they shouldn't have to worry about this at all, what's going on with, with these types of functions. They're called Dunder methods because of the double underscore. And uh, the first one that you get to know here is Dunder init, which stands for initialize. And this is going to um, allow us to give, a, to give a name to each Pokemon instance that we're creating. Okay, so you might, um, let's do a pass in for now. You might see that uh, there's this little self that I put in here, uh, additionally to the name uh, parameter here. And this, um, the best way for now to think about it is just like this allows you, like passing this thing here gives um, a reference to the instance that you're creating. This might be a bit confusing. Don't worry about it now. Uh, there's, but for every instance method that you create inside of a class, you're going to have to pass self if you want to have access to anything that is created, um, that is part of that specific Pokemon, in that case, the name, right? 
So this allows us um, yeah, to make this connection. And then I'm going to say self.name. So here I'm defining an attribute on, that, on every instance of that object. And I'm going to say assign to self.name the name that comes in when you're creating the Pokemon, OK? So these two are the same, right? And if you're familiar with functions, you can see that this is something that is going to get passed at the beginning and then goes in here and then gets assigned to a new variable that's just called the same because that makes sense, right? Uh, but it's part of the self object. So again, it's it's the same concept, right? You see there's this dot in here, similar to how we here said, this is going to be the object and then dot name. So you can see that self is going to re be replaced by whatever the object is that you're creating. Okay, so like this, I can give it a name. And now let's go back over here. I I'll always have to exit this and then restart it again because uh, it needs to pull in the code again. And it only does that at the beginning when I say import. Okay. Okay, so I now I can make a new one. Um, okay. Dot Pokemon. And what do you think is going to happen when I just call it like I did before? Well, I'm going to get an error. And the reason is similar to if you would call any function that requires a specific argument. It's just telling you exactly that. You're, I'm trying to call it without passing an argument, but it actually needs this argument to properly run. And here you can already see that um, what's happening when I do this, this open close brackets on an object, is that this init function um, method is going to get called. And it's telling me that it's missing one required position and argument called name. You can see that it's not talking about self, yeah? Because self is something that you're passing by creating it already. So that, that's already, that already comes in because you're making this instance, but this instance wants to have a name and I'm not giving it the name, so it just doesn't know what to do with it and gives me an informative, informative message. So let's try it again. And now instead, I'm going to pass a name, right? And no complaints. Python is happy. And now I'm able to say b.name, and I get the name back. Now this dot name attribute on my objects, on each Pokemon object that I'm going to create, uh, is already going to exist because Every, yeah, on each creation, it gets assigned automatically, not in this manual way that I did it before on an empty class. OK, cool. So um, what else do we need for defining one of these Pokemons for this simple game? Um, another input that you want to have is going to be primary type. Type, OK? So in the same way that I did this before with self.name, I'm not going to say self.primary type and then assign it whatever I'm passing when creating the, this Pokemon, the, the instance of it. OK, so I have these two things that describe it. It has a name. I guess it could have a number. It could have a couple of other things. But I'm going to keep it simple, just with a name and a type for now. And we're going to expand on this in a little later, a little down the road. OK, I was able to take a look at it. Let's, get, let's exit this and work a little from within the script and running the script. So you could also take a look at it by running, this, by running the script and printing it out. So I can say print, and then I need to, just like I did in the script before, I need to create an instance of it. Let's do that. I can do it directly in the call as well. So I'm going to say this Pokemon. I'm going to create an instance of a Pokemon. I'm going to give it a name. That'll be Bulbasaur. And I'm going to give it a primary type. Primary type. And which is a nice thing to see here as well, is that VS Code is uh, very helpful and gives me already some suggestions on what I should actually put in there, even though this is a class that I wrote myself. So it has this introspection and can figure out that it understands I'm making here a Pokemon object. It understands the class definition before. It knows that it needs these two um, positional arguments. And so it already gives me a suggestion to, to put them in there, right? OK, and that's going to be grass. So now I can go ahead and run this code, the script. And I'm going to, in here in the print call, create an instance of a Pokemon, pass it the two attributes that it needs, and then print it out. And there it is. Well, 
but that's not very informative, right? This looks the same as it did before when we had this empty Pokemon object. So there's no, if I, let's, let's make another one, right? Let's make another one, Charmander, right? And that's fire. Now if I run this and print both of them, there's not a lot of difference that I could see by just printing them out in this way. They're both Pokemon objects. Okay, that's correct. And they are at uh, different, they look like they're at the same memory location. I'm not sure why, why that's the case. It should be a different <laughs> memory locations. Anyways, um, but there's no way that I could distinguish them even, you know, like there's just, I don't really have much information about it at all. Which brings up the question, what do Python objects do to give this informative printouts? For example, when, when you remember making a path object, right? Let's look into this for a second. Yeah, and then we created a couple of those. So now I'm just gonna print one out, path object and pass in, let's do this dot home. home. Yeah, so I'm making this. And if I look at just printing that out, I get some much more useful feedback from a path object than I get from my custom Pokemon object. This is the default and it doesn't tell me much, but you can change what comes out in a print call, which is what most Python objects do. They implement something to give more informative output. And this something is another Dunder method. Let's look at that next. And it's called Dunder string. So Dunder SDR, again, you need to pass the self. And in this case, nothing else. The self just gives me access to these two attributes in here or anything that's defined within the instance of this, of this class. Okay, so I want uh, to read something else instead of this uh, kind of cryptic feedback. Um, and so whatever I return in here is what's gonna get printed out when I call, when I call the print function on one of these objects. So I'm gonna return an F string with uh, these two variables in there. And so if I wanna access it, I have to, again, honor the namespace, right? That's the object itself that I'm passing in there. So I can say self.name, and then maybe in brackets, I'm gonna put also the type, self.primary type. Okay, so now if I run this, I'm going to get the information that I actually have, and I'm going to be able to distinguish these two Pokemon. There you go. Now I get the name of it, and then it brackets the, the type. So now I see that I have two different Pokemon objects and that they're actually quite different Pokemon. Cool. So that's what you can use this thunder string method for. Again, you see it has this double underscores, which is kind of telling you that you shouldn't uh, mess with it unless you're the person who actually, who actually uh, creates this class. Okay, so um, I want to take a chance here also to show you something that's pretty confusing for a couple of people that get started um, with Python. If you have seen this, uh, this one, no, there's an autocomplete somewhere. I don't have it now. So. It doesn't matter if dunder name equals equals dunder main. You might have seen this before. And that's something that's pretty confusing for some people who are more used to doing procedural or, or, or functional programming, which is what we did in the last two streams, essentially. Like we did, if you remember the other two scripts, they just, all they did was running from top to bottom both of those, right? They were just executing line by line. Now, in this object-oriented uh, way, there might be, and also when you're working with functional programming more, there might be other types of like uh, ways that you want to execute this. And you've already seen one here. I've been using it by importing the class into a REPL session instead of just running the script, right? So uh, that might be a way that you want to execute it. And you're maybe you're building um, a game that other people could use as a start. Maybe you're just building out a couple of different types of um, players in this game. Like there's Pokemon, maybe there's some trainers or whatever. Uh, and you want to give this option, uh, this as an opportunity for someone else to build on top of so that they can just say from uh, your Poke module import 
Pokemon and Trainer, for example. So it, that, that, in that case, you wouldn't be running the script from top to bottom as, a, as we've been doing here, but instead you'd allow them to import it. And I'll show you now what's the difference in this. So I have two, I have two, this two print calls in here. And if I would leave them in there and then import this module somewhere else, for example, in this in interpreter session, so I can say import, okay. You can see that it executes the code that, that is sitting in here, right? So I get the printouts of these two and it runs every, like all the code that's in there is getting executed. So if there's some sort of functionality that you actually don't want to run, maybe it's just for testing or maybe it's for when you run the script explicitly, then what you want to do is to move it inside of this Thunder main. Watch the indentation. So, because this is just uh, it's a it's just a conditional if statement that checks for something that's part of each script. There, there's like the global namespace that has a definition for this standard name variable, and if it is main, which it is only if you run this script directly. So if you press play here, then this variable in the global namespace of Python is going to be underscore, double underscore main, and only then are these two lines of code going to run. So I can show you, yeah. yeah, let's show this first here. So I press play, the output still happens. Those two objects get created and printed out. But in, when I now go inside of the REPL and I import it, and then you see that the code didn't run this time. So before I was just importing it and it ran this code as well, but now the namespace, uh, the double underscore name isn't main, but it's going to be instead this, the name of this module. And so this code is not going to run. So in case you're encountering this line of code that looks kind of confusing with all these underscores, um, now you maybe have a bit of a better idea of why this is useful and when you would want to use it. Okay, take a look at it. I'm going to keep that here. And let's think a little more about the functionality because so far we've talked a lot about object-oriented programming, but we haven't done much of the game functionality yet. So let's bring it back to there. What else was the plan? Two more. We want to be able to feed to increase health. Health. And also make them battle and decide for a winner. Okay. So uh, to in order to increase health, we're going to have to have some sort of um, variable that keeps track of the health of, of an individual Pokemon, right? It's going to be different for each instance of it, but we definitely need some sort of space where we can keep track of that. So I will add some uh, variables in here when creating a Pokemon. And this is going to be, we're going to have something called max HP. So this is the maximum that it can ever have. And then also assign this to a self variable. Yep, max HP. And then we can, when initializing the Pokemon, it should just be uh, like, it should have some way of counting down the current. Let's just call it self.hp. So what it has at the moment. And this can, at the beginning, when you initialize it, it can also be the uh, max HP. So we, we don't, we just want it to come <laughs> into being, being all the way healthy, right? So you see, I'm assigning max HP. I only need to put this input once, and I'm just assigning it to two different variables here, max HP and HP. And then I'm not going to be changing max HP. I'm just going to leave that as is and use it as a comparison to how how high up can it get, etc. But this one, I'm gonna. Uh, change in the feed one, for example, right? So, um, so here's now a second big thing about object-oriented programming. So far, we've only talked about attributes, dot name, dot primary type, also the two new ones, HB and max HB. They're all uh, they're all attributes to it. They they don't do anything. They're just like a color or a name, etc. Right? They're an, an ad adjective attribute. Yeah, they're called attributes. Now you also want to want them to have this class to have some functionality. And these things are called methods. Specifically, if you make them inside of a class, they're called instance methods. If they're, that's the most common ones, if they apply to an instance and take the self as an input. So 
both init and SDR, the one, the, the two ones that we made so far, they are instance methods on on each Pokemon instance. Now I'm gonna make a third one, which I will call def feed. You see that I'm not using any double underscores here because this is not a Python inherent thing. This is not like a somewhat private method that you should leave alone and not access directly. But I want someone who plays this game to be able to actually feed the Pokemon and, and give it some berries or whatever to increase the health. So uh, that's why I'm not putting any underscores, but it's still going to be an instance method. So I still need to pass this self. And then let's just keep it simple. I also could give this one some, some, some arguments, like maybe what type of parry, but feel free to work on this game more and like build it out some more if you're interested in it. For now, I'm just going to say anything that you feed to it is going to increase the uh, current self.hp by one, let's say. So I'm going to say self.hp. And I have access to this variable because I'm passing the instance into it. I'll say plus equals one. All right, so that's a very simple implementation of this. I can increase health by feeding it this, but there is a little bug in this right now because uh, I defined a specific max HP when, when creating the Pokemon. So I don't want it to go higher than that. So I can just add into this inside of this function and I can say, oh, it's actually, let's, let's run this first and see what's going on. Maybe I will copy this so I can be a bit faster inside of my in repo. Okay, so be Python. And I'm also going to from poke import just the class because that's the only thing I need. And then I can create one. And I will also need to pass. So if I just run it like that, I'm going to get an error. But because my initialization function is missing a required positional argument called max HP. So let's add this as well. Max HP is, let's say, 100. OK, so I don't wait, I, because I didn't print it. You see, so why did I? When I just uh, in a REPL, if I just uh, press this like B and press enter, then I still get this kind of like cryptic output. And the reason for this, I'm not going to go into this too much, but there's another one uh, called Dunder Rapper. Rapper. I don't know actually how to pronounce this, but it's written like this. And this is like some defines the representation of the object. And this one you could define as well. And uh, that's just a, it's a more um, it's a more direct and very specific description of what's the content of this class, while the string is more just what's the most important part that you want to show to someone when they print it. So if I print this one, you see, I get the output that we defined in Dunder string. OK, so I might also want to add here something we're noticing. It could be fun to add the HP, maybe something like, I'm going to say max, no, HP of max HP, max HP, there it is. And I'm going to need the self for both of those so that it knows which ones to pick. OK, um, so next time I start this, it would, it would also print those out. I'm not going to redo it right now. But uh, by having this feed function defined in here, I'm now able to say, well, let's first look at it actually, b dot um, hp is 100 right now, because that's what I gave in as max HP, which means that it got assigned also to the current HP. Now I can use this method and, and feed it to increase the HP. So I can say b.feed. And I need to use these brackets because that's a method. That's a method that actually does something on the instance of this object. If I don't use the brackets, it's just going to tell me about what this is. It's going to tell me, look, you're talking about a bound method called uh, on a Pokemon object called feed. And it's inside of this module and that object at a specific memory location. But that's not what I'm interested in. I actually want to execute it. I want to feed the Pokemon. So I say b.feed. Don't get any feedback. But if I now look at b.hp, 
you see that it increased by one. So I can change the state of the data by using one of its um, instance methods. And you see that this is going to be like this. Is, this is persists throughout like the state of the whole object. If I would be using this HB anywhere else, and we might want to use it later in when battling, then uh, you this is going to be available. The, the feeding is going to influence the HP state that is um, that is yeah accessible throughout the whole instance of this specific Pokemon. If that makes sense. Okay, so now, but we have this problem. We don't want it to go higher than the max HP. So I'm going to introduce a conditional here that says um, if self dot HP is smaller than self dot max HP, then we will do this. Otherwise, the function is just not going to do anything. Or why not? Let's give some feedback. Otherwise, we print out a little string that says self.name. And you see, I'm reusing all of these variables. I can use them anywhere as long as uh, I have access to self. Name is full. And here I can say, maybe also give, an, give some sort of feedback. Self.name uh, has now, and then self.hp hp or health or whatever health points let's stick with it okay so this uh gives us the opportunity to feed and increase the health of each of each instance of pokemons that we would create um and it doesn't you can't feed them to be uh have more hp than they can have in their what's whatever's their maximum hp that you define when when you create it Cool. So we have one part done, and now there's another one left, which is actually allowing them to battle with each other and deciding for a winner. This might be a couple of steps, so I'm just going to start off on off on off 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 with it like this. Here you go. And uh, it it will work in a similar way than this feed function uh, did. Uh, just I'm going to define the another instance method here, and I'm going to call it battle. So that we're going to be able, able to call b dot battle and then make something happen, right? So it again needs the self because it's going to be able to change the state of that specific Pokemon. It's going to be able to. It has to be able to decrease the HP, for example, if it loses, or maybe increase it if it wins. We can decide what's going to happen. Um, so it needs to have access to the self, but there's more, right? Um, I need to be able to interact with uh, a different object, a different instance of a Pokemon. So I also need to have access to another one, and I'm just going to call it other. This is a default. By the way, also self is just a, it's a default way. You could, it's just a variable name. You could name it anything, but it's very, very common to name itself. And just for readability for you and for other programmers, this is just the default that you should use. So I'm going to say self and other, which means that it's going to take itself as an input, like it does here for feed. And then inside of the brackets, it's going to take another Pokemon object another pokemon instance as an uh, as input as well and then we can make something happen in here so let's start by just printing them out and see whether this is working so i'm going to say print out self dot uh, print out i guess self dot name and other dot name as well so this requires you see there's no auto completion or anything in there because for now VS code doesn't know what is this other going to be and um, that's something to be aware of also with python when you write code in there there's no i'm not enforcing that this other that is being passed in here is actually going to be a pokemon object i could pass anything in here but um, my code the way that i'm writing it right now uh, is going to rely on it actually being a pokemon object so that it will be possible to access the dot name attribute on it uh, and there's ways to make this more secure by type checking, uh, which is something that Python has introduced to just make sure that there's actually only going to be a Pokemon object that can be passed in here. Otherwise, your code is going to error. And there's other languages that are much more strict about this. But Python is like, you, you kind of like <laughs> allow 
for a lot and you catch these kind of things um, uh, and, and write your code in a way that it's not a problem if someone actually puts in something else. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do for this, for example, writing exceptions um, or, or this type checking that I'm not going to go into now because not so much time within an hour. All right. But uh, let's check this out anyway. So I should be able to now get the name of both of these Pokemons when they pet battle, maybe let's say battle. And then print out both of the names. For this, let's do it in here. And that's a nice thing about using ppython that I can cycle through previous commands. I get it just now. Uh, 150 maybe. It's going to be a different type. OK. Oh, so this wasn't smart. I overwrote. <laughs> one with the other so now we've now i made it very confusing now b is going to be charmander and c is going to be bulbasaur so just for a little confusion adding a bit of confusion in here for both of them i can call a now hp and also battle hp okay so this is b is the charmander it has 150 b dot name charmander and c dot name is bulbasaur and now depending on whom I start with, I can fight the other ones. I can say B dot battle. And then I pass in the other Pokemon object that I created. And I see that now we have a battle between Charmander and Bulbasaur. All right, um, so this is working. We can access the second Pokemon object in the same way that we access the first one with through this other variable here. Now we just need to actually get them to battle instead of just printing out the names. So for this logic, I guess it depends on a bit on uh, how you want to implement it. There's obviously there's different ways of doing this. Um, I would just say maybe yeah, we make it simple. So we make it dependent on what type they are, whether they're going to win or lose. And uh, I want to break out this functionality on deciding who wins against whom, essentially into a separate function. Uh, that, but this function is still going to be part of my class in here, right? So I will take it out, and I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call this one just the type wheel or something like that, type wheel. And this is going to need as an input type 1 and type 2 in order to decide which, one, which of them wins. Now you see that I didn't. Um, I don't have to put self in here because I don't really need access to the instance uh, in this case. I just need to get these two types from the two instances, but I'm going to call the function in here, call type wheel, right? I'm going to call it from within battle, and it's just going to take instead of self.name and other.name, it's going to take the primary type attributes of these two different objects, and it's going to pass it to this function. And the function uh, is then going to decide which of the ones is, is winning. And functions like this that you make part of a class. So I still have the indentation here, right? So it's part of the Pokemon class. And I need it to be part of it so that this, uh, uh, this method can access it. And they are called uh, static methods. Because I don't need the actual, I don't need the instance access to the instance. So I can just tell it, look, this is a static method. If I wouldn't put this in front of it, uh, it, it might complain that it needs the self in there. But because it doesn't need it, I can just say, no, no, don't worry about it. It's a static method. It's just part of the namespace of a Pokemon, but uh, it could run anywhere otherwise. OK. And now, what are the different options? I can say, what's going to be the result? Uh, we can. And I'm, I'm going to make a dictionary here and just map a couple of options to numbers. I'm going to say 0 is the loose condition. Um, and then 1 is going to be the win. Oops, it's going to be a number. 
one is a wind condition and let's say minus one is uh, a tie if they're from the same type for example um, and again actually so let's uh, as in every step where you have a couple of programming pieces that you need to figure out, you can always write down your pseudocode. So I want to now um, I need to figure out like some some mappings between the types and the win conditions or result conditions. So I need to do that. And there's different ways of doing this. Um, when I looked into it, the one that um, I like uh, as a as a way of implementing this is a so-called win-lose matrix. matrix. So I'm going to implement this one. And then we will also need to declare a winner. OK, so these are three steps. And I'm going to start off with implementing this win-lose matrix. I'm going to say um, win-lose matrix is uh, going to be a list and this list has a couple of conditions in there so i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna make this a list of lists a list that contains um, other lists and has specific win lose conditions but for in order for this to make sense i guess we're gonna first need to see what uh, what different types exist so i'm gonna make a game map here and do this as a dictionary yet again and I'm just going to keep it very simple. I'm going to say there's three types. There's water, um, which maps to zero. There's fire, which whoops, maps to one. And then there's grass, which maps to two. So you can think of this uh, similar to um, what uh, not tic-tac-toe, the scissor, rock, paper, scissors, right? So we just need to have some sort of type wheel where it decides this one wins against this one, this one wins against this one, this one wins against the first one again. And now need to implement this in a way. So um, we're going to need three of these little lists here. One for water, one for fire, and one for grass. And in here, I want to define the conditions of what's going to happen if if they if the two different types uh, battle against each other, right? So water for for water, if water battles against water about the first one, then the condition is going to be a tie, right? So I'm going to say if it's water against water, I'm going to have minus one they tie. Then if it's water against fire, then water is going to win, so that's going to be a one. And then if it's water against grass, and it's two, then uh, water is going to lose. So there's going to be a zero here. Right? And I can do the same thing for the other ones. So this would be zero, tie here, and wins against this one. And this one's going to win here. It's going to lose here, and then tie against itself again. OK, so um, now, now this, there's a way that I connected these two the results and the game map with each other. And now I can declare a winner using like a little maybe complex seeming um, list lookup, so to say. So I'm going to look inside of this WL matrix. And now I'm going to see, OK, I'm going to look at the spot. Wait, let me actually build this in a couple of steps so it's easier to understand. So we have a game map, and I can, this is a dictionary, sorry, there it is. This is a dictionary, the game map. So I can look up stuff in there. And why not? Let's put a little breakpoint in here. Maybe we can, ah, no, OK, we don't really have the time for this, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, so in the game map, you can look up the, the two types. We have like grass, or fire, or water that's going to be passed in there. And then uh, I, I can map this to numbers, right? And these numbers are going to help me to look up specific positions, uh, index positions in the wind lose matrix. So on the game map, I can say game map at the space of water, for example, is going to give me zero, right? This means that in the wind lose matrix, I want to look up what happens if 
water, so wind loose matrix. Matrix. What happens if game map water here? Uh, something like that, right? I could put this in here because this is going to go for a number. It's going to return zero, one, or two, which means it's going to refer to either zero, the first list, the second list, or the third list. So like that, I have identified the first step. So I want to look in here and then in, inside of that list, I want to look up what is it fighting against. So the second one, which is going to be another lookup to game map, but in this case, it's going to be, for example, fire, right? So that's the second lookup inside of here. I want to look up the position. So wait, there would be water and then the um, minus one. So it wins against so this one. Fire is one. Right? So the zero first position. So if I look up game map fire, it's going to go to one and find the win condition in this case. So by adding this another lookup in here, game map fire. This is essentially going to translate to matrix, look up the first one, and then inside of the inner list, look up the first one. And so this result is going to be uh, here, one. So like this, I have decided, um, I have determined that water is going to win against fire. Hope that makes sense. It's a little, it's a little brain twist in here, but try to, if you try it again at home, then, then just try to piece it, piece it apart and figure out how it works or just build a different type of way that you can decide who wins against whom. There's different ways that you can implement this. Okay, but this works. I want to return, um, I don't want to return the number. I, would, I then want to return the result. So I'm going to do another lookup. I'm going to say result and look it up at the result of this, maybe this is a bit too long. <laughs> so uh, my result is going to be or win lose result, let's call it like that. It's going to be this long string. And then I'm going to look up what that means. Is it a lose? Is it a win? Or is it a tie? I'm going to look that up in the results table again. Okay, so I get rid of this because I don't really need this. And of course, these two things shouldn't be hard coded, right? This was just for as an example, but now I actually want it to be these two different types. So I'm going to say type one. So whoever uh, starts the fight is going to be type one. And whoever gets fought is going to be type two. And these two things, these two variables are going to be the input to the static type will method. And then we should be able to get a result that's going to be one of those strings, either lose, win, or tie. OK, so that's the static method that can decide it. And now we're back to battle, where I can just say self.typewheel. I still need to use this self here, because static the method is part of the object but I don't need to um, pass it anything otherwise. And instead of giving the names here, as we saw that works, I can say self.primarytype and other.primarytype. OK, and then we have a return statement here, which should give us back a string. So I can assign the output of this to result. Uh, let's move this one up. Let's just say the battle is starting. And then we calculate who wins and then print out the result. Just the result is not going to make much sense. But I can, again, make a f string that makes this a bit, bit more readable. And we need to know who fought. Self.name fought other dot name and result and what what did I call them and lose win tie and the and now I can put this into a proper English sentence the result is a win lose or tie anyways so this is not a great English sentence but um, you get the point 
of what's going on here. Okay, so now let's give this a spin because we're already over the time. So I'm going to give this a spin and then give you a couple of ideas how you can still improve this. Uh, let's head back over into the ppython console and then import. Create two of them. No. B. Okay, so I have two po Pokemon here and now I can make them battle each other. So I'm going to say c.battle and pass in the other object. And then I get some output here. It says the battle is between these two. Bulbasaur fought Charmander and the result is a lose, which is um, accurate with if you think of the types, right? So Bulbasaur is a grass Pokemon as we defined it. Charmander is a fire Pokemon. So Bulbasaur is not going to win against Charmander. What if we let them fight the other way? I can say B dot battle C. Charmander fights Bulbasaur and then Charmander fought Bulbasaur and the result is a win. So this seems to work. Now if we make another instance of another Bulbasaur object, let's call it X. Now I can say X dot battle. And because I named them so confusingly, I have to think about it for a second. This is going to be C is going to be the other Bulbasaur object. Bulbasaur fought Bulbasaur and the result is a tie. All right, so this is um, this would be a very basic way to implement this. I wanted to show you still how you can go ahead and inside of the where is it the battle function here, you could do more things than just calling the win and lose conditions. But you can have some sort of um, yes, I'm, I'm going to link a I'm going to link the GitHub too. It has a little more implemented there too. Um, what you can do additionally, for example, is you could. Uh, depending on the result, depending on the result, have some effects, right? So you could say um, if, I'm just gonna, but you could, for example, say if um, result equals equals loose, then we can say self.hp minus equals 10, right? And then you could also, um, you can again have a little message that comes here that says uh, self.name lost and now has self.hp, hp, right? So this would be a loose uh, an effect that happens as a as a loose condition to the to the Pokemon that started the fight, so to say, and um, you could implement other things like that. You can implement a condition where what happens when the Pokemon wins. You could maybe gain some um, HP because it got happy for winning or whatever, and uh, you could uh, implement some sort of conditionals that say if it's below a certain HP, it actually can't start a fight. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you can you can like extend your program from here on, but um, I hope you understand that you have some sort of a basis here that uh, shows you how it's useful to to use this object oriented programming. Let me still run this so that we can see um, also the results of something like that. Max XP is one hundred, and then here one hundred and fifty. I'm gonna define these two instead of printing them. So this is Bulby and this is going to be Charm. And then we can have a fight that battle Charm. Uh, this one's going to lose. Yeah, so we can see, we're going to see the output. So let me run this as an example. You get a syntax error. Looks like I made a mistake somewhere. Probably a bracket somewhere. Uh -huh. So this is just because I'm still inside of the bpython interpreter, so I couldn't run the code. Now, if I run this now, you see some out output of the game. So it says there's a battle between Bulbasaur and Charmander. 
Bulbasaur lost and now has only 90 HP. Bulbasaur fought Chamber and result is a lose. Okay, so you see, like also, um, you can obviously play a lot with this out with these outputs and make them be much nicer and make more sense um, than they do right now. But yeah, this is my this is my general introduction to object oriented programming in Python by building a little game. You've seen how to use the init the under init function that you saw that you can make objects and then you can uh, persist a sp specific attributes for each of the instance of the objects. Like just make sure that each of them have specific attributes. You can define that with the init uh, method that you can that, that you then need to pass when you actually instantiate one of these objects. Then uh, you looked at this, uh, done the string as a method that you can use to, def to define what gets shown when you print out um, and one of your custom objects that you created. Right. Then you looked at using instance methods. So methods that uh, use the specific uh, instance of, of the object that you created and does something with it. We built two of those, one called feed, where you can add some, uh, some health back to the Pokemon by giving it a berry, right? And it gives you some output as well. And then another one that allows you to battle two Pokemon with each other and gives you some sort of output depending on uh, which which of them lost, which is in this game, it's only dependent on what type they are. But feel free to work this out in a more complex way, of course. And it gives you some sort of feedback again, what happens. And you see the interesting parts in this that is when you're working with self.something, you see that you always have access to the state of the instance that you're working with. So this self.hp starts off with the maximum HP but over the course of your program or an interactive game that you're building like this, this self.hp could change constantly. Like you could lose, uh, you could decrease the HP when you lose a battle or you could increase it when you feed the Pokemon or maybe also if you implement it, you could increase it when it wins, et cetera, et cetera. And then you also saw a st static method that is part of the class, but it doesn't actually work with the instance as the other ones do, but instead it just has some functionality that would work anywhere also outside of the class um, but uh, it, but in this case we want to make it as a part of the namespace of the class yeah uh, well, you also heard about namespaces just like this one is part of the namespace of the class how you can uh, how you have a module namespace when you import something and how this is helpful this uh, if done the name equals main is helpful in order to avoid printing out certain things when you just want to import a module and use it in some other code. And here we are. So yes, that's it. <laughs> thanks for uh, listening and thanks for being part of this. If you're interested to learn more, more Python, feel free to check out the GitHub. Like if you want to work more on this code, uh, the, the code is up on GitHub and Kim sent the link in the chat. And uh, if you want to check out the Python course, check out our courses on the platform. Uh, platform.codingnomads.co you can get started for free learning there and um, yeah check out the twitch channel we maybe gonna implement some sort of a weekly hangout where we can code together and where i'm happy for some inputs and some ideas that we can just talk about code together and figure something out um yeah and that's all check out the youtube channel we're gonna have these videos up uh, really soon and gonna send out an email to you uh, everyone who's on this list so that you can rewatch it if you want to and then I'm also going to put in a link to the GitHub repo in case you don't have it so that you, you will have it with the video as well. All right, that's all. Uh, thanks for joining. Glad you liked it. And uh, yeah, hope to see you around. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by liking and subscribing. If there's another topic that you'd like to learn more about, leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you. And if you want to become a coding pro, visit our website at codingnomads.co. See you next time.